Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about making procedurally animated text that moves in a mechanical way. I am cutting in vlogger style because Workbench Live is coming at you next month. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to be at the Keyframes Conference in Orlando next month. I'll be speaking, Seth will be hanging out. The panel of people is so insane that I almost want to be watching it rather than doing it. I'm telling you, these, there's, some good, there's some good people on this thing. Anyway, if you guys are anywhere near Orlando next month, make sure to check it out. I got a link in the description below and you can use join me 19 to save some money at checkout. I hope we'll see you there. So this is the text animation that we're going to be making. This tutorial is only going to focus on the text animation itself. If you're curious about how the look of all of this stuff is built or anything else that you see in here, you can download the project file from our website. If you're a patron at the $5 and up tier, you actually get all of the project files as they come out, sometimes a little bit early. And also we've been recording BTS of all of the builds of all of this kind of stuff lately. And that's also available on there if you wanna check that out. So the cool thing about this is that this is all built procedurally from this one text layer. I've set this up with master properties so that this can be changed outside of this comp. Like if you wanna just call this workbench, which I think I just misspelled, but that's okay. And it's going to be huge, so we can bring it down to 50%. And it takes a moment. We can move it up a little bit too. And it's completely different now. It takes a minute to render. And now it's completely different, and I actually spelled it correctly. So that's cool. So I'm going to undo that just because I kind of like the big WB. You know me, I'm a huge Warner Brothers fan. I don't know. So, as I said, it's all built off of this one text layer. The master property stuff is just however you want to set that up. The main idea is that we're using this one comp to build everything. This one just says text because the way this was set up in the uh, original master property. So for consistency's sake, let's make that WB. All right, so each one of these text layers is this main text comp. In this first one, I'm luma matting it with this text generator movie. I've used this before in the past. You guys have probably seen it. Just uses this as a luma mat. I have this white piece pop over it because otherwise it stays like this and you have these lines over your image. Each one of these shifts over in some way, so let me just solo one so you can see kind of how it works. So this one comes in with that luma mat and then it shifts over to where it's gonna live. Every one of these text layers moves at a different timing and they all kind of have just like one simple push. So you get that mechanical slash transformers type move. So the thing that these all have in common are two effects. They all have channel combiner and because of how this effect works, it actually squashes that JS classic layer to basically fit the comp which is kind of nice because normally I just scale it in anyway because these JS classic layers are huge. And it basically takes the luminance and uses it as the lightness of this layer. So if I turn all of these other effects off, you'll see that it basically takes on that JS classic layer. So from that, we use the extract effect to basically chop out a portion of that image. So this one's from zero to 59. The next one goes from like 59 to 138. So each part of these is one section of the luminance of the overall map that we're using. So that's basically the whole setup. These are all kind of like puzzle pieces, and when they have all animated into their final position, then they kind of rebuild the image. On top of everything, I have the fill effect, which basically just adds the color back in instead of that JS Classic look. If you don't care about what color these things are, you can use fill in here, or you can actually add that to your master property if you want to do it that way. If you really need what the original source material looked like, you can go back through and add like CC composite on top. The other interesting thing is that this doesn't have to be text. You can actually go into this other composition and put in a solid layer. And mind you, it's gonna be white instead of yellow because of those fills. But if you go through and render this now, you'll have a reveal instead. So this is kind of a handy technique to build things in a procedural way so that you can have things that are moving back together in a mechanical fashion. I've always seen all these text animations that have that kind of stuff in it, and I never really thought about how easy it actually is to split them up using a technique like this. But as you can see, it's actually pretty simple. Either way, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week. If you'd like to help support us, check out patreon.com slash workbench. As I said before, that $5 tier gets the BTS content, so that's pretty cool. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.